Hola, muy buenos días para todos y bienvenidos a nuestra sesión de información sobre Acadia University. Es un gusto tenerlos nuevamente aquí. Les saludo desde la ciudad de Cali, en Colombia. Muchísimas gracias por su asistencia, por su participación. Doy la bienvenida también a nuestro coordinador de producto, el señor Karen Gupta, quien nos va a presentar en un momento más todo sobre Acadia University, sus programas, lo que la hace especial, las becas y demás. También tenemos a nuestra Country Manager en Perú, esta mañana aquí acompañándonos, Dayana, buenos días, bienvenida. Así que eh, muchísimas gracias a todos nuevamente por su asistencia y por eh, la compañía. Recuerden que si tienen alguna pregunta lo pueden hacer a través del de botón Q&A y al final estaremos respondiendo a esas preguntas. Así que, um, again, thank you so much, Karen, for your time today, and uh, you can take it from here. Thank you very much, David, and I would wish all the attendees over here a very good morning at your end. My name is Karen Gupta, and I am Marketing Manager representing Acadia University. Acad Let me just share the screen with you guys so that I can... Oh, uh, David, I think you would have to promote me for that to go you've been promoted karen so i think the screen is now visible to all so yeah, very good morning again my name is karen and i'm marketing manager representing acadia university which is in nova scotia province of canada yes acadia university is one of the oldest and most respected liberal arts university based in the town of wolfville nova scotia canada Acadia University happens to be 182 years old as it was established in the year 1838 and it happens to be one of the top ranked undergraduate universities in entire Canada currently. Acadia University is located in a very beautiful region which is known as Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia. Now, Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia is offering a great opportunity to the students to get indulged in activities like wineries, orchards, seafood restaurants, adventure activities, all while overlooking one of the seven natural wonders of the world, which is Bay of Fundy. So each year, Nova Scotia attracts more than 2 million people in form of tourism. And the region where Acadia University is located is overlooking an iconic Bay of Pundi, which happens to be one of the seven natural wonders of the world. The phenomenon over here is that you can witness sea tides, which will go high up to 50 feet. So the view between low tide and high tide is entirely different. Now this thing, this phenomenon also helps to regulate the temperature in this region of Nova Scotia. And this region is second warmest region in entire Canada. Because of these tides, which keep on changing, the temperature in Nova Scotia ranges between minus nine degrees in winters to 30 degrees in summers. So it offers a very conducive environment as we talk about the weather conditions. Apart from that, Nova Scotia currently is one of the safest places as the total number of COVID cases has been very, very low. So yes, Nova Scotia, the local communities are back to its normal. Yes, they do, uh, they do maintain the social distancing protocols, and they do all wear the masks. But yeah, the parks are now open, the shops, the establishments are now open, and normal life has returned to Nova Scotia. Now, talking about Acadia University further, it is located at a distance of only 80 kilometers from the capital city of Nova Scotia, which is known as Halifax. Acadia University is located at a distance of 80 kilometers from Halifax and 85 kilometers from the International Airport of Halifax, known as Stanfield International Airport. The time required to reach Acadia University from Halifax or from the airport is roughly one to one and a half hours via driving. So it is very close, very proximate to the major hub of Atlantic Canada as Halifax happens to be the only city in entire Atlantic Canada region. There are great part-time as well as full-time work opportunities available in this region. And average wage rate for part-time job seekers is roughly 12 CAD per hour. It starts at 12 CAD per hour. 
talking about the town of Wolfville, where Acadia University is located, it is a town you want to pick up and hug, as quoted by Jim Byers in National Post. The town of Wolfville is spread across a area of 7.3 kilometers. It has eight plus parks, 15 plus restaurants, and the permanent population of Wolfville town is 4,500 residents. Further talking about Acadia University, it has a strength of approximately 3,500 students. So yes, we can say at a given point of time in the town of Wolfville, you can find approximately 8,000 to 8,500 people living. The location of Acadia University is such that it is located at a distance of only 500 meters from the coastline. And talking about the students, there are approximately students studying from 65 various countries in worldwide. So very diverse culture, uh, you will find at Acadia University, students from almost 65 countries worldwide study over here at Acadia University. The first highlight though of Acadia University is its average class size, which we keep at only around 28 students per class. So average class size is very, very low. It's only 28 students so that each and every student can get a chance to have a hands-on learning experience. So Acadia University does maintain a very low class size. Yes, it is one of the top most ranked universities when we consider the undergraduate category universities in entire Canada. According to McLean's Magazine Canadian Rankings 2021, Acadia University is now ranked among uh, ranked number three undergraduate university in entire Canada. It is also ranked number one undergraduate university in Nova Scotia. So yes, Acadia University is one of the top most ranked universities in Canada when we are considering the undergraduate degree universities in entire Canada. This is an aerial shot of our 250 acre campus, which has various departments. There is the main building in the center, a library, a church. And apart from that, there are 11 on-campus residences in which we can accommodate all the first year students and coming students to Acadia University. So yes, we have the capacity to accommodate all the first year students at Acadia University on campus of facilities and apart from that there are dedicated play areas it is a very beautiful campus it offers a very conducive environment for studies particularly i would say so that the students who are seeking admission to acadia university they don't find any difficulties they find a very peaceful environment and they can concentrate more upon their studies while at acadia university the major highlight about Acadia University though, are the programs which we are offering in upcoming September 2021 intake and the co-op work opportunities which are associated with these, these programs, these academic programs. So almost 80% of the programs which Acadia University offers have an associated co-op work term there are three faculties offering 30 majors and 200 plus degree options at Acadia University. We have Faculty of Arts offering economics, psychology, history, English, sociology, politics programs. We have the second faculty known as Pure and Applied Sciences offering Bachelors of Science in Biology, Chemistry, Computer Science, Engineering, Geology, maths programs, psycho BS in psychology, applied computer science and computer science happen to be the most in demand or the most popular programs at Acadia University in this pure and applied sciences faculty, because we can offer a bachelor of computer science, as well as a bachelor of applied computer science for students looking forward for mobile computing, game development, software development and data analytics specializations. The Faculty of Professional Studies is offering Business Administration Program and Community Development Program at Acadia University. The Bachelors of Business Administration Program, we can offer to a student along with six different majors. The majors part will start in the third year of the education and students can graduate with a BBA in Accounting, Marketing, Finance, Entrepreneurship, Employment Relations, as well as a Business Technology Management. So these are the programs which we are offering for international students, particularly for upcoming September 2021 intake. 
Regarding eligibility criteria, I will hand over this to David later on once I finish my, pretty, uh, my presentation so that he can guide you according to the academic qualifications of particular region. So I would just jump to the next slide requirement of what are the fee structure at Academy University? What is the fee structure? So starting with the application fee, it is only and only 40 Canadian dollars, which is very, very reasonable amount considering it is uh, being charged by a top ranked university in Canada. So the confirmation deposit after that, once a student wishes to accept the offer is only 150 Canadian dollars, the non-refundable confirmation deposit and uh, the tuition fee would be 18,421 Canadian dollars. Along with that, in the first year, the student would be required to pay the technology fee, athletic fee, Acadia student union fee, a health plan and a dental plan. So roughly in first year, the amount sums up to be 20,500 CAD approximately. The students can choose, as I earlier mentioned that we have on campus residences, so they can choose from the option of a single room accommodation or a double room accommodation along with the 70 main plan. So the roughly, uh, roughly the cost would be for that would be somewhere between 10 to 11,000 CAD Canadian dollars approximately. Acadia University is offering more than 4 million Canadian dollars in form of scholarships each year. So Acadia University is offering one of the highest and most prestigious awards when it comes to scholarships, scholar bursaries and financial aid. Each year we are awarding more than 4 million Canadian dollars. A single student at Acadia University based upon their academic performance can avail scholarships up to 60,000 Canadian dollars. Initially, on the basis of their high secondary scores, students can also avail entrance level scholarship, anything between 500 Canadian dollars to 10,000 Canadian dollars if they apply before the deadline, which is 1st of March, 2021. So all we need is an application, an application amount of 40 Canadian dollars. So once a student has been issued an offer letter, they would be considered automatically, all the students uh, who, are, who also meet the minimum eligibility criteria, they would be all considered for entrance level scholarship as well, if they apply before 1st March of 2021. We're talking about health counseling and accessibility services. So yes, Acadia University is very supportive in all these terms. We do have one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions. We have academic support. We have support with the grant application. So students need not worry with any non-academic kind of queries or any non-academic kind of concerns when they are here at Acadia University. There's an Wong's International Center which will cater to the needs of all international students and help them even with filing the taxes or any other non-academic query if they have at any point of time. But the major highlight, as I earlier mentioned, is our co-op programs, the cooperative work opportunities, which our students get to complete while studying at Acadia University is ranked number one in smaller universities category in Canada. It is a nationally accredited co-op program, which is ranked number one in smaller universities category in Canada, and students can earn up to 10,000 CAD of uh, amount while studying, while completing their co-op work term. There would be four co-op work terms in four years and students can earn up to 10,000 Canadian dollars in these years of work terms. Recently, Government of Canada has also announced 492 million CAD to boost youth employment in the Atlantic Canada region. So yes, this is the right time for the students to consider Atlantic Canada, go there, study there and look for, for the job opportunities which are really booming currently in this region of Canada. We do have exchange programs with certain institutes worldwide. If a student wants to complete a semester or a year outside Acadia, they can go through the list and they can carry their credits and uh, vice versa. They can come along with credits to Acadia University. We do have tie-ups with various organizations, various institutions in uh, worldwide. So talking about residence, uh, we, as I already mentioned, we have on-campus residences. We do offer a very wide variety of foods in our dining hall, which chefs prepare from locally sourced vegetables. There are more than 80 ways to get involved 
Apart from your academics, you can get involved in extracurricular activities in more than 80 ways. We do promote sports at a very large level at Acadia University. Stand up and cheer is our anthem, which our fans stand when our teams represent Acadia University in of various sports activities. And we have, we are the only university with highest number of championship titles in entire region. So for application process uh, associates, we only require the students' documents from your end. You can forward all the documents to us and we will process the application for students for our UG programs. New students can follow various social media handles to learn more about Acadia University and see what Acadia is all about. And with this, I would like to thank all of you. Thanks for your patience and thank you for hearing me out today. Please. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate the presentation. So um, I am going to move on, on to the academic requirements for uh, students from Latin America. Um, and then we are going to address uh, some of the questions that um, our panelists, our guests rather may have. So uh, let me do this bit in Spanish uh, for our agents in here. Los requisitos de aplicación son bastante sencillos um, para todos nuestros estudiantes, básicamente Estamos buscando chicos que se hayan grabado de un programa de 12 años de bachillerato uh, o de secundaria en el caso de México. Es muy importante tener en cuenta que si tenemos estudiantes que son top of class, es decir, que tienen notas entre 9 y 10 en el caso de Colombia, podemos dar admisión con los 11 años de bachillerato pero tienen que ser estudiantes muy, muy buenos académicamente para poder lograr esta extensión. Si son estudiantes promedio, pues entonces sí estamos buscando que los chicos tengan esos 11 años de formación en el bachillerato más un año adicional. En segundo lugar, estamos eh, necesitando un pasaporte, un IELTS de 6.5 con ninguna banda por debajo de 6. Hay algunas opciones de nivelación que ya en un momento más vamos a eh, mencionar aquí con Karen. Um, y también necesitamos completar un documento de aplicación. Así que los requisitos de admisión son bastante sencillos. Eh, si los estudiantes ya están cursando el primer semestre de la universidad o el primer año de la universidad, eso nos serviría para evidenciar ese 11 más 1. Y también podríamos solicitar transferencia de crédito si es que hubiera un match entre el programa en Colombia o el programa en Perú o el programa en México y el programa que el estudiante ha escogido en Acadia University. Entonces, um, son requisitos bastante, bastante simples. No tienen eh, ninguna, eh, ninguna dificultad o, o no hay nada extraordinario. Son muy estándar. Ok, so that covers uh, the academic entry requirements for students from Latin America. Karen, I, have, uh, I would like to keep start with the questions in regards of two items. So first one is scholarships. So you know that, of course, the students are really interested into applying for scholarships or those academic married and entry scholarships. So what is the process like? Do, does the student need to do anything in addition to applying officially uh, for the university? Do they need to fill out any uh, type of additional form or do they have to supply any further evidence when they are applying for the scholarship? So, uh, David, the process is very, very simple. Once a student will receive an offer letter and through the student application portal, the student will have the option to fill up the entrance scholarship form. Once the student mm -hmm. has, the sim student simply needs to mention uh, what were they right? Because academic documents have been already received. So they mm -hmm. only need to mention if they were involved in any of the extracurricular activities, what are their strengths or what are they looking forward for Acadia, a simple uh, brief which they have already mentioned in their statement of purpose. And that is as simple as that. And once they submit their entrance uh, scholarship form, they would receive an entrance scholarship certificate uh, whatsoever they are eligible for. Okay, great. And the second question that I have, um, and I would like us to discuss a little bit more in, in this regard, is that I know that when students, for example, do not have the IELTS 6.5 that is required for direct entry into our programs, they can enroll in some remedial or preparatory program um, for English. Uh, I know this is not like a general English type of course of uh, preparation or program, but it's more to level up those students that perhaps are on the 6.0 mark, maybe 5.5. Um, and so this is an amazing opportunity that students would have to level up their English. 
So um, I have a couple of questions in regards to that. What would be the minimum uh, English requirement that we can accept? I mean, is it IELTS 5.0, 5.5, or IELTS 4.5, uh, or whatever it is? Uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is how that would actually work, um, because sometimes our agents would be asking us, oh, but do we have to pay an, an additional an amount, an additional amount for students to do that leveling uh, program? Uh, can they uh, enroll into their English program? plus um, start with their course content, the main degree that they have chosen. So if you can walk us through that process, uh, will be great. Uh, David, uh, I would just say that the minimum eligibility requirement for Acadia University currently would be six each in IELTS band and 6.5 overall score. Though there are certain uh, instances where based upon the higher secondary English uh, or medium of instruction, they can be waived off, but I would really appreciate that you kindly share such kind of profiles with us or the international admissions team so that they can assess such kind of profile. Yes, there are EAP programs, English uh, as a second language programs at Acadia, but we need to uh, consult the international team whether they would be accepting the student for the EAP along with the academic program. The EAP programs mm -hmm. would be paid. So yes, it's not that they, we don't have them at Acadia, but still, I would say that we would need to, uh, based upon the profile, we, ne we need to consult the international admissions team regarding the same. Okay, great, wonderful. So it's basically case by case basis. Yes. Uh, and whenever we have those um, cases, we need to send them through to our admissions team so that we can do a uh, comprehensive assessment and, and to check what the options are at that stage. Okay. Sorry, David. Wonderful. Uh, Karan, um, this course is going to be before of the main course or it's going to be at the same time? Can you uh, clarify that for us? If, 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 if they are accepted for the same, it would be before the course uh, because for before. a September intake, yeah, for a September intake student who goes in with an EAP, I suppose they start with, uh, they start in May or before September, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Great. Um, another thing that makes our university extra special are the co-op programs, Karen. So that is one part that agents are really happy about our university, aside of the price point and the location, the migration possibilities and so forth. So can you uh, talk a little bit uh, um, about, uh, in addition to what the um, requirements are for students to be able to be part of the co-op? The first thing is that we need to make sure that the program does offer a co-op. Uh, because I know that only 80% of our programs do offer the uh, access to the co-op program. So that would be first step to check on uh, if the program offers the co-op. Once we have checked on that and the student has finished their first year, what they need to do and what would be the acceptance requirement for them to get into the co-op program. Right. So the co-op programs at Acadia University in uh, the academic calendar, they start in, uh, after the four semesters, after second year, I would say. That is the summer break after the four semesters. The minimum eligibility criteria has to be maintained. I would say it would be 2.0 GPA of minimum score, which needs to be maintained by the student to be considered eligible for the co-op work terms. So I would add that they are not mandatory kind of thing because the student has to initially maintain a minimum eligibility criteria. The ones who will qualify would be then uh, seeking help from the co-op department who would be uh, charging a small amount from them and then prepare the CVs and get them uh, into the interviews with the respective employers, uh, which would be uh, looking forward for graduates or international graduates as an interns, right? So yes, these co-ops, if you talk about our sample co-op work terms, we have tie-ups with organizations like IBM, Deloitte, Blackberry, even Irving Oil, Department of Justice of Canada, Department of National Defense, so yes, the co-op work terms are really, really very great. Once a student is uh, working at uh, one of these organizations, I would say the average earning of an Acadia University student, the average is 10,000 Canadian dollars per work term. So at the end of four years, there would be four work terms. First is after second year, after the summer break after four semesters, the second and third co-op work terms are in third year. And the fourth work term is a final break after the fourth year, the summer break after the fourth year. So at that point of time, the final co-op, fourth co-op is an optional co-op, three co-ops are included in the curriculum. So 
the students would be earning roughly somewhere between 30 to 40,000 Canadian dollars. That is the average earning of a Acadia University student. So what we can uh, tell the students through associates is that they can afford for half of their fee structure through these co-op work term earnings only. So this does help the students to sustain very easily and they can afford for half of the fee structure. After second year, I would say they can pay their semester fees from these co-op or an year from this co-op uh, work earnings. So yes, co-op work term are one of the major highlights as I mentioned, the MNCs, the organizations which are quite well known worldwide, IBM, Blackberry, Deloitte, Electronic Arts Games. So these are quite well known organizations worldwide and the students will be completing their internships or their cooperative work terms from here. This also enables our students to, you know, uh, have a higher uh, placement uh, chances because they would be like, they would be having, uh, they would be from one of those 97% students who get placed at the employability rate of Acadia University is 97%. That means the students very easily, 97% of students get placed very easily or within one or two months of their graduation because uh, at times they are being hired by the organizations uh, who have uh, who, with whom they have completed their co-op work terms so i would say that yes it is a great opportunity for the international students particularly to learn gain professional work experience and even earn so it's an earning as well as a learning opportunity for our international students or the students studying at agaria university Absolutely, Karen. Absolutely. Um, another mm, frequently asked question by our agents is regarding the scholarship. So let me go back a little bit to that. Um, you've already mentioned the process, the type of scholarships that we offer, um, but we should address uh, some type of students that are athletes that maybe are at the competitive level, um, say soccer or maybe basketball or tennis. Um, is it possible for, uh, for one of those students to apply for a, an athletic base uh, type of scholarship? Uh, yep. Uh, as I earlier mentioned, uh, that while filling up their intense level scholarship form, they need to mention over there that what kind of sports they were uh, like involved in, uh, what sports do they play. So yes, university does consider uh, extracurricular activities also for, uh, on that pretext. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Um, okay, I think those, that's uh, the extent of questions from my end. Diana, do you have anything further before we um, wrap up the session for this morning? Yes, uh, I have um, one question. Uh, let's say that we have a couple of students, uh, a husband and a wife, how they will apply for the homestay or the accommodation options? They can apply on campus or they have to apply off campus? Oh, that, uh, would you please... Uh mind uh, repeating the question oh sorry oh sorry so, correct, yeah. uh yeah okay yeah my question was about um a couple case let's say a, a husband and a wife how how they will apply for the accommodation options they will apply for on uh, they will apply on campus okay. or they will apply off campus uh, that's a kind of very new question for me because i do know that there are co-ed hostels or co-ed uh, on-campus residences uh, but I have ne never been through this question that if there is a couple who is coming to uh, Nova Scotia or Wolfville, maybe they are studying together or they want to live together. So I we need to confirm it back from the uh, team, I would say. So rather than okay. rather than giving right. uh, giving half information, I would say that we will get back to you <laughs> regarding that. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes, yeah, we have yeah. those cases. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you have some homework, Karen. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's always good to have some homework, and you know this is how we learn. <laughs> Absolutely, with those yeah. with those new new type of questions. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's um that's it from our end, Karen. Thank you so much for your time and participation, for answering and guiding us through all of the application procedures, and um, and commonly asked questions from our agents. I uh, really appreciate it to all of our agents present here and to our colleagues. Thank you so much for your attendance, for your time, and for the interest in promoting Acadia University. You have an amazing university that has a lot of benefits in terms of price, in terms of scholarships, in terms of co-op access, an amazingly beautiful campus just 500 meters away from the ocean in a province that is migration friendly and that um, is focused on the liberal arts education. So I think Acadia has everything that students would be looking at at a university for their undergraduate studies. 
So again, thank you so much for your time and for your questions this morning. And we will be chatting very, very soon. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, thank David. You, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.